that my battery's dying out, but I have to do this fast. The four olds, look it up. It was, uh, the term four olds appeared in June 1st, 66, when they were going to sweep away all the monsters and demons where old things were described as anti-proletarian. Fostered the exploiting classes, and however, um, they want to destroy the cultures, habits, and ideas specifically constituted the four olds were never clearly defined. The, and then they talk about the Central Committee, the Cemetery of Confucius was attacked during the Cultural Revolution, and they were getting rid of everything Chinese. Everything Chinese. I want I can't read this cuz I can't do this and hold the camera at the same time but you must read this they destroyed everything they destroyed everything that's why you've got the chinese when they say chinese people there are two kinds of chinese and one of them does not know who they are I'm going to show you um when I lived in Coquitlam oddly enough Oddly enough, um, I lived in Coquitlam. This was before Expo 86. This is Walk with Yan, Stephen Yan. He was our local celebrity. In fact, I've been to his restaurant, and I've been to this show. I was in the audience back in 1981 or, or 1982 or whatever, maybe even 80. And um, after my parents divorced, I, I moved around quite a lot, and... I think I was a bit of a, what, here there you go, there's our Coquitlam audience, that was, they say it's Vancouver, but it's actually the same area where Dorothy Stratton, I used to live right near the, um, in the ninth grade, I used to live, I actually went to school with her sister in that grade, that's what, I, I was there for one year, and we lived right near the Dairy Queen that Dorothy Stratton was picked up at, or met that Paul Snyder guy. You know, this is the way we dress in China. It's very comfortable. I was trying to show you what it looked like in Shanghai and also Nanking. So, anyways, plain, of course. poor Stephen Yan. He was he was kind of used to sell Vancouver in a way because the show was very popular. He even ended up on the David Letterman show, and he was funny and pleasant. And this is remember, this is still under the before the New World Order. This was already, this is in the 80s. This is when, look, it's all quite normal in China. This is before the New World Order and the Three Gorges Dam. There was a little bit of a golden age, like I said, all around the world in late 70s, early 80s, because our music was so good and our, our clothing was so nice and there was no LED lights, there was no high tech, there was no cell phones, there was no computers. So it wasn't like this soulless, monstrous juggernaut. But see, now you have... <laughs> so he's funny, but they're trying to destroy the Cantonese. <clears throat> now there's a big difference between the Cantonese, like Stephen Yang, Stephen Yan, I should say, and these new Chinese, because remember, they lost themselves. Oh, there's my granny. I have a Chinese grandmother. I have, uh, my other grandmother is half Chinese as well, but I'm going to show you. Well, there's my granny right there. There's one of her daughters. She's half, half, uh, there. And there's the grandfather, okay? Just so you know, when I'm calling people out, this is why. But the point, the point that I'm making is that my grandmother has a story, and nobody knows it because she's very secretive, but she was the daughter of a magistrate. They lost everything, and whether you, it's from the, 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 the British and the colonial forces or the communists, it's a combination of everything, and uh, we were not told, they don't like to talk about history because it's a shame, it's a big shame, and the problem is now when people say Chinese, they're talking about like crystal, like there's a different kind of a Chinese. Now, I recommend to see Walk with Yan, Stephen Yan. This was copied ever since about copying. Uh, the, now I'm talking like him. He always had these funny uh, walking chair. 
So this is um, the real deal. This is a Cantonese, and, and this is what they're trying to get rid of because they said, oh, it's like happy talk. That's embarrassing. So the Chinese are trying to destroy the Chinese is what I'm saying. Can you believe it? Here's another example of a, um, of a Cantonese guy that's a hero, oh, Wilfred they are. Wong. They are and this is how they talk. We should seriously consider rather than simply dismiss offhand, which, which often happens, uh, Very rational. Uh, Wilfred Wrong, he's going after the Satanists. Um, he's, uh, he's awesome. He's a lawyer. He lives in uh, Britain now. But anyways, but this is what we I'm against, okay? I've never this, that. okay. this little biatch right there. Okay? So, but this... You're a ridiculous human being. I'm sorry. And she, Crystal, because she's Chinese, she gets away with saying the creepiest things. And she's the other kind of Chinese. See her angular features? It's totally different from this, okay? Those are the two different Chinese we're dealing with. And I'm getting tired of people saying Chinese when actually all we're seeing are these mainland Chinese types. I don't know if she she was probably born here but these angular these very tall Hans who are um, lying she said something about feeding the red envelope to the dragon we never did that that's not the way you do it that's that she doesn't know who she is she's married to some Jewish Hollywood producer and uh, she doesn't know she's not the uh, representative of any Chinese person including myself um, so um, yeah, they are looking down at the Cantonese because you have to remember there's two kinds of Chinese, one that was tor tortured and one that wasn't. And I'm, and I'm just saying that when people are um, tortured or um, traumatized and they don't get healed, they become the psychopath. They become the Ted Bundys of the world. They become the Jeff Dahmers because something does happen to you when you destroy your fuller old and you destroy everything happy. Like, someone like Stephen Yan, they hate. Do you understand? They hate, she hates Stephen Yan. Do you understand? Look at that face, and look at this one. That's the difference. Look at how popular he was with all of the Canadians. They loved Stephen Yan. And this helped actually sell Vancouver, unfortunately, with Expo 86, and now he was gone underground. You can't even find this guy. But he was our, our number one star. We, we didn't have Hollywood North. After Expo 86, uh, I can't stand this chick. Get off of my screen. I'll turn this down. After Expo 86, Vancouver became the place where they got Lionsgate and started filming everything there because it was cheaper. They could save you know, a lot of money by filming everything in Vancouver. And that's why now you have all the close-up crap television and staccato images because they, they would film Vancouver and pretend it's Chicago or something or New York. That's where the downfall of your television shows came in. And then HD came in, and there's no colors anymore. There's no vibrancy. Okay, is everybody sick of this culture yet? Can we bring back the 80s now? Like, yes, there's. we have to take back the four olds. I want you to look up the four olds, understand that there's two different kinds of Chinese we're dealing with now. Let's face it, I'm, not, I'm tired of people t saying the word Chinese when they're actually, they're literally going after the Cantonese, and that is where a part of my a culture comes from that I don't even know. I just started to learn about it, and then now it's being taken away from me. And it's just like anything. As soon as I find out that that something is good, like a brand of coffee, suddenly it gets discontinued. Are you getting sick of it yet? Are you getting sick of the bad colors, the bad lighting, the, the people who don't look right, the people who don't sound right? Because we're never going to um, have any progress until we actually find out what define what the meaning of good is and, and hang on to it for dear life. There's a difference between the Cantonese and the Mandarins. And one day I'll go into a little bit more about what my family lost at the hands of not only uh, the commies, but the British, and that what the Chinese did to themselves. And so they're jealous of people like uh, the, the first wave of Chinese who came to America and became people like Stephen Yan. Uh, it seems like they're jealous and they want to snuff it out.
they're, they're not appreciative of the, the strides that they made and the path that they paved so that the Chinese are not hated and they're not and, and so now what's going on is I don't know if who's doing it who's in charge of television now but they're showing everybody uh, like all the the Negro people in a really bad light and you saw my picture of my grandfather I'm part Negro and Indian and everything you whatever so I can say this but they're, they're showing everybody as jerks and obnoxious and arrogant and, sell, and screaming and shouting for nothing, this generation. So there's a weird reason because now in the commercials, now that we've seen in Canada, where we don't have a lot of black people here, but we, all of our commercials are 80% Negro. And now they're going to slide in the, the Han, uh, sh the, the, the mainland Chinese, like Crystal from Beverly Hills, those ones, not this one, you know, <clears throat> and they're going to start coming into our commercials to, to relieve us of the Negroes that are on the commercials. I can see what they're doing and I can see why they're doing it. It's hideous, it's disgusting, it's creepy, it's mind control. And I want them, I want this ended. This is ridiculous. This whole generation since uh, 1989 has been garbage.